What is up, Dynasty Leaguers? Welcome back into another DLF YouTube channel video. Today is going to be uh, just another rookie mock draft, but it's actually going to be the final rookie mock draft from 2021, the final of this series where I've been pulling actual comments and actual leagues and rosters from you guys down in the comment section to go through these mock drafts. So this is going to be the final one before we actually start picking up Dynasty Startup mock drafts. So I'm very excited for the next phase of this. I'm I'm excited to you know finish out some of this rookie talk and stuff that we've been doing for basically the past two months post draft, all these mock drafts, but then also doing mock drafts before the NFL draft and everything. And so I'm excited to actually get into Dynasty Startups starting next week. So that's gonna be really, really fun. And I'm gonna see if I can get some analysts and stuff on here, some DLF people, you know, maybe like guys like Ryan McDowell and Scott Connor and other stuff to talk and go through some dynasty startup mocks. So that's all going to be coming in the near future, starting next week with startup drafts. But today we're going to be finishing out this rookie mock draft series. I got another one here. This is a 12 team, one quarterback. And I think we're ending on kind of a banger because we have seven picks in the first two rounds, four firsts and three seconds that we need to go through in this one quarterback league. That is somewhat of a rebuild. It seems more like we're getting towards the end of a rebuild or at least we're in a reload right now because we have all these picks, but we also have some really, really good young pieces to build around on this team. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. So like I said, we're going to be doing a 2021 12 team, one quarterback rookie mock draft. This is going to be the final of the series that I've been doing where I've been pulling actual rosters, leagues, draft picks from you guys down in the comments. So this one comes to us from Christopher DeSavio. I hope I said that name right, but Chris, thank you so much for offering up your league and your draft picks and your roster to go through and mock as if we were you. So. Like I said, we have seven picks, four first rounders, three second rounders that we need to go through and talk about for this team. And so we can dive in and look at this team. Like I said, 12 team, one quarterback. It is a PPR league as well. Uh, but at the quarterback position, he has Josh Allen. So very solid there. Very, very good in one quarterback league. Running back, we have Antonio Gibson, AJ Dillon, Damian Harris, James Robinson, and Anthony McFarland. So we have some pieces there and a lot of high upside as well. Wide receiver, we have CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy, Brandon Ayuk, Gabriel Davis, and Jacoby Myers, and Mike Williams. So pretty solid young wide receiver depth and core that we're going to continue to build and add on uh, with this rookie mock. And then at tight end, he's got TJ Hawkinson and Blake Jarwin. So like I said, we have some pieces here to build around, some pieces and upside uh, that we can continue to push further on towards competing in seven draft picks that we need to talk about here. So let's look at these draft picks because this is what we have going on here. So we have the 102, the 106, the 107, and the 1.09, as well as the 2.02, the 2.07, and the 2.08. So this is going to be very fun. We can get right into this here because we have the 1.02 pick, and it's going to be really cool to see who the 1.01 is, and it's Jamar Chase. That's probably going to end up being what is actually going to happen uh, in your actual draft, Chris. Uh, so this is actually really a decision right here, right? For the last couple of weeks and the last couple of these shows, I've been advocating for taking Kyle Pitts. And especially since the end of, you know, the Julio Jones saga where he got traded to the Tennessee Titans, I believe Kyle Pitts is actually pretty close to a one-to-one -one replacement for Julio Jones on the outside. And I think he has the opportunity to be the best pass catcher from this 2021 class in their rookie season, or at least up there with Jamar Chase as well. I think both of them could very much be within, you know, or over 1000 yards, maybe get another 60, 70, upwards of 80 receptions in their rookie year. That is, I think what we could be looking at with Jamar Chase and Kyle Pitts. So I think Kyle Pitts is definitely going to be in the discussion here at the 1.02. The only other argument that I could see being made for what is going to go on here is if you pass on Kyle Pitts, you could take a running back here and you could add to Antonio Gibson, AJ Dillon, and Damian Harris. And you can add to that running back. What I would be fearful of doing is going that route and then you're going to lose out on Kyle Pitts because our next pick isn't until the 1.06. Uh, and then at that point, basically, you're going to be talking about wide receivers and stuff. And I think that this team is young enough that while we don't necessarily need to be 
adding that one running back to really compete this year, even though we have a good core with Josh Allen, Antonio Gibson, CD Lamb, we have a wide receiver too between Jerry Judy and Brandon Ayuk, some high upside players behind them in both positions, and then TJ Hawkinson at the tight end position, you know, you could go the running back route to add to that and really solidify that RB2 position with Najee Harris. What, and again, what I think would be, I'd be fearful of doing is doing that and then not really be competing or at least missing some sort of a window that you have with Najee Harris. And I think if you just take Kyle Pitts, you take Kyle Pitts, that either makes him or TJ Hawkinson, you know, pretty expendable. And you can trade, you could potentially trade Kyle Pitts, I think, for an even better running back. Like you could realistically, I think, by the beginning of the season or depending on how good Kyle Pitts actually turns out, you could probably trade Kyle Pitts for like, you know, Clyde Edwards Hilaire or Joe Mixon or some other running back like that that's upwards and already in that tier and is already established, even though I still highly believe in Najee Harris. You could definitely do that. Or if you just really need some production, you could trade TJ Hawkinson and trade him for, you know, a lower level running back, maybe like a Chris Carson or package him for like a David Montgomery or something like that if you really need that type of production. And if you really are succeeding with Kyle Pitts in your tight end slot, I think drafting Kyle Pitts gives you just a lot of value on your team and a lot of, you know, potential avenues that you can really go one way or another with a lot of your trades and to build out the rest of your roster through the rest of the summer. Cause you know, it's the end of June. You don't need to start a lineup right now. You can still, you know, take the next couple of months to figure out what is going on. And so at least adding the Kyle Pitts value on your team, gives you some different avenues and directions uh, and some decisions to make for the rest of the summer to really solidify and finalize your final starting lineup before we get into the beginning of September. Um, the other thing that I think could potentially happen, it didn't happen here, but if you take Kyle Pitts here, it I think is also possible that you get one of those three running backs back at 1.06. It didn't happen here in this mock draft, but I think that there is definitely a situation and a, a possibility that one of them fall back to you, probably Javante Williams. And so that would also be another reason in my head onto why you could you know, pass on Najee Harris and take Kyle Pitts is the hope of getting one of them, you know, and one of Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, or Javante Williams at the 1.06. Like I said, it didn't happen here, but I think it's a possibility. Or if you wanted to, you know, you could take 1.06 and trade up to the 1.05 and then ultimately really solidify, you know, your 100% chance that you're going to get one of those running backs. You could absolutely do that. And that would probably be the move that I would be looking to make to solidify that running back position and take Travis Etienne or Javante Williams and just move up one or two picks at the four or the five from the 1.06. I would definitely be down to doing that. Or if you even want to do uh, maybe a, a bigger jump take your 1.09 your bump all the way up to four or five from that 1.09 uh, and then that way you know you're you have more players at the top of this tier um, and then at the start of the second tier than what you had before right so those are ultimately some decisions that you could be making chris on how you could be structuring out this draft and everything um, and going through all of this so we can talk about now we have the 1.06 we also have the 1.07 and the 1.09 so we have back-to-back -back picks here again this is just wide receiver territory i'm not really looking at trevor lawrence because you have josh allen in a one quarterback league that's you know really not ultimately what i'm looking to do and if i would be looking at a quarterback i'd probably be looking at one of them in the second round either a trey lance or a justin fields at the 2.02 .02 or maybe down at the uh, 2.06 or 2.07 so this is what we have. We have the this just wide receiver city right here. We have back-to-back -back picks. So my two wide receivers that I would be going with right now uh, would be Devonta Smith and Rashad Bateman. I definitely think you can make the argument for Jalen Waddle just to give yourself some ultimate ceiling upside, but he's not going to do a whole lot for you, I think, in year one with Miami just because they also have Devonte Parker and Will Fuller there. But the ultimate career upside could be a lot higher for Jalen Waddle than it is for. Uh, specifically Rashad Bateman, but maybe also Devonta Smith. But I like taking the shot on Devonta Smith for potential now production, and then Rashad Bateman as your long-term pr production from you know the Baltimore Ravens offense whenever they move on from Sammy Watkins. Bateman solidifies himself as the team's wide receiver one, uh, and we get things rolling. So I like taking both of those players and both of those wide receivers to add to what you already have in CeeDee Lamb, Jerry Judy, and Brandon Ayuk. Then here at 1.09, it actually worked out uh, that we could, you know, take Trevor Lawrence at the 1.08. We get Jalen Waddle at the 1.09. So we got all three 
you know, of those wide receivers after Jamar Chase. And I'm very, very happy with that. And you can mix and match however you want your wide receivers to be. If you want to take Jalen Waddle over Rashad Bateman, maybe see if Bateman falls uh, or maybe get one of the Moors at 1.09. You could definitely do all that. That's just personally how I would be looking to attack the wide receiver position with those three picks. So up again at the 2.02. .02, and then just a reminder that we also still have the 2.07 and the 2.08 uh, coming up here at the, you know, in the middle of the second. So we have uh, some decisions to make here because like I said, this could be where if you were looking to add to your quarterback position, you could take a shot on some rushing upside like what you already have with Josh Allen with really good passing as well in both Justin Fields and Trey Lance. You can just had added a high end quarterback to onto your roster and be really solidified there behind Josh Allen. You could look to do that. You could also look, you know, to continue to build out at you know your wide receiver position because here we have Rondell Moore available. Maybe this is where you add to your running back depth as well. Uh, maybe Rondell Moore goes and then we're looking at either Trey Sermon or Michael Carter at this pick. I would definitely be looking at Michael Carter if he is available here at the 2.02 .02, and he would be my pick over Trey Sermon just because I'm, I'm you know, preference to Michael Carter uh, in that New York Jets offense. Um, so here, just because of the situation that we have found ourselves in, I would take Rondell Moore um, and just really solidify, again, your wide receiver position. Like you were so set at wide receiver now uh, that it's not even funny with how many wide receivers you have and just basically throwing darts into the dark and seeing what comes out after CeeDee Lamb and Jerry Judy and Brandon Ayuk, just seeing what you got out of these four wide receivers from this 2021 class. But like I said, would also be looking to target uh, potentially Michael Carter there as you know, you're one of your running backs to add to your depth chart at running back. So here 2.07 and 2.08, um, you could also, again, Justin Fields and Trey Lance went 2.03 and 2.04. You could be looking to add Zach Wilson here, kind of basically the same argument for Justin Fields and Trey Lance. You just take a little bit of a, of a discount in terms of not as high upside, I think, in Zach Wilson, just because of the rushing floor that you're getting from Fields and Lance not necessarily getting that from Zach Wilson, but you get a little bit of a discount in terms of your, you're getting him at 2.07 or 2.08. Um, so you definitely could go that route here. And that's probably ultimately going to be the route that I'm taking because I don't really like a whole lot of the other players here outside of one other wide receiver, uh, which is Amon Ra St. Brown. You could take Amon Ra here at the 2.07, pair him with Zach Wilson. And I think that's a very nice conclusion to how you wrap up this mock draft. I'm not really looking at Pat Frymuth. You already took Kyle Pitts. Um, the other running backs here, while they have some upside, like Chuba Hubbard, if Christian McCaffrey gets hurt, um, I think is is nice. But again, if Christian McCaffrey gets hurt, and then I think Ramondre Stevenson, I think it's too much of a reach for Ramondre, um, and then a bunch of the other running backs and stuff. So if I were you here, I'd just be looking at Zach Wilson, uh, and then Amon Ross St. Brown would be my two picks here. So we have a lot of wide receivers that we just added to your team. A lot, a lot of wide receivers. So this is where I think that you could ultimately make, make some moves and I think would be very comfortable in trading some of these second rounders to pair with one of your firsts to get up into Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, or Javante Williams and seeing if you can really solidify one of those running backs for a long-term answer at your running back two position while you wait out and see what you have in AJ Dillon or potentially see what we have in Damian Harris as well in that New England Patriots offense. So I really, really like doing that. I would definitely sacrifice, you know, Rashad Bateman or Devonta Smith and Amon Ross St. Brown in order to bump up to ETN or Javante Williams. I'd definitely very much be okay with that. Uh, and then taking your shots at 1.09 and seeing if Michael Carter comes back to you at 2.02. Um, so I really, really like having that opportunity to balance out, you know, the two positions that you take and maybe not go so heavy on the wide receivers. That's just ultimately how this mock draft fell out, that we went really, really wide receiver heavy with going five wide receivers. Uh, and then Kyle Pitts and Zach Wilson as our, you know, seven picks here in this draft. Uh, so I think you have some decisions and some options to go in this, in this rookie draft, Chris. So I, I really, really hope that this helped you out. Um, maybe help solidify some of your process as well. Uh, and ultimately, you know, just helping you gain and reload and add to an already, what I think is already a good roster and make it even, even better for you down the road as we move forward. Cause it's a very young team. So I really, really like that young team, a lot of upside with production now as well with the upside of, you know, 
potentially competing. You never really know. So you have that upside of potentially competing this year with all these assets that you've already added. So that's going to do it for today's mock draft, guys. Thank you so much for watching and for tuning in. Uh, and sticking with me through all of these rookie mock draft series. Like I said in the introduction, we're going to start working our way into dynasty startups, going through one quarterback and super flex startups, seeing if we have, you know, specific strategies or team building constructions based on where you land in your snake drafts or stuff like that um, and going through all of that. So I think that's going to be the rest of basically July moving through is going to be some dynasty startup talk because we're getting into actual startup season right now and with all these new leagues especially those DL dlf ultraplex leagues that we have over on safe leagues you can definitely go out and add a dynasty startup to your off season already a couple other things i wanted to mention one i threw up a poll yesterday monday on whether or not you guys are dlf subscribers or not basically we just want to see what type of an audience that we're you know we're garnering to here are we talking to a lot of people that are already dlf subscribers are we talking to people who are just strictly here for the video content either one is fine we just really really want to know and hone that one down because we have some exciting stuff coming to you guys throughout the rest of the summer we have a lot of big things planned uh, in the very near future for what we have going on content wise and what we have you know to provide for you guys as well as already planning out our in-season content so that is another thing i wanted to ask is that if you have any ideas or you would like to see any specific content from us for the rest of the off season for the rest of the summer or even in season what type of content you would like to see please drop a comment down below and we will see what we can do uh, and work towards that type of content for you guys if you would really like to see that because ultimately you know we are here to give you guys what type of content you want to see so if you want to see something specific either for the rest of the summer or in season please let us know and we will drop that type of content so thank you all so much for watching thank you for tuning in and we will catch y'all later